Okay, so right now we're on this chapter here, the 26th verse of this uh, particular chapter. This is the okay. second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada said that I have put everything in the first canto. Okay. Uh, you know, everything you need to know, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. there's some really, we just went over some really nectar verses, uh, the like from verse 16 to 20, 21, I think, or like a lot of these uh, gurus who start their classes, they'll, yeah. they'll recite those verses because they're key. You okay. Know? I think... Uh, actually, I'm just going to start where we left off here. Yeah, man. Go, um, knock yourself out, whatever you want to do. Um, if you want to read, do, do you want to read like the English? Sure. Do you want to just. I could do that. Oh, okay. You know how to read. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I kind of have uh, studies like this with friends of mine too. So I'm, just, I'm fairly used to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you do it on the Zoom? I actually just attended. Uh, it, Along with Danae and Brianna, we attended um, a funeral for one of my best friends, actually, who just passed. Oh, man. Yeah. And he yeah, he's uh, he was living in Kansas City and an organization back here. He was a Jehovah Witness. So oh, okay. um, and one of his good friends is also a mutual friend. So he had a Zoom uh, memorial for him. And uh, it was really well done. I was really pleased because it, the Zoom gave us the ability to be there in spirit you know? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. um, so, I mean, I'll tell you that if you use technology the right way, I mean, a lot of good things can come yeah, up. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like, you know, when, uh, when, you know, that old lady, um, used to be on golden girls, which one, <laughs> right. The really, I mean, really old invited, one. <laughs> she was invited to go on SNL to host and, and the, she got like a, Eddie White. a ton of, of requests from SNL fans to host the show. Okay. And so, you know, he says, she, I don't know anything. She's like a hundred years old back then. Yeah. 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 And, and so she said, I don't know anything about the, the Facebook, but from what I can see is like a big pile of garbage, you know, <laughs> and it is, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah. but the thing is, if you use it for some purpose like that, like you said, for, yeah. for getting with friends and, and uh, actually kind of sharing some important message and absolutely yeah, yeah. can be used Prabhupada said you can use anything in Krishna service you can use a typewriter mm -hmm. you use the uh you know radio and you know of course the tv but uh you know you can use bombs <laughs> I don't know why you said bombs <laughs> but <laughs> but uh I'm not pretty radical to say that but he can use anything in 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 Krishna service you know Anyway, gotcha. I'm going to start out. Here's what we're going to sure, do. Sure. I'm read the, um, I'm going to read the text 27 and the synonyms and the translation. And then we're going to take turns reading the paragraphs. You see the paragraph right there? It starts. I do. With, you can read that. And if you have any problems with the Sanskrit words, mm -hmm. that's that's Bhagavad Gita. That that. Yeah. That there. But um, I'm just going to start reading here. And so. Sure. You know, uh it just sucks to peep to be the people that are missing out on this. Cause you know, yeah, I hear you. One of my friends kind of opted out, you know, Oh really? She said she didn't want to do it anymore because uh, uh, she gave made up some of many bunch of excuses, but anyway, <laughs> whatever uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't mind, you know, whatever people want to do. Right. I can't force anybody to do anything, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here's text 27. Okay. Rajastama Prakritaya Samashila Bhavanti Vai Priti Bhuti Prasaj Prajesadin Sriasvarya Prajesava Synonyms Raja the mode of passion Tama the mode of ignorance Prakritaya of that mentality Samasila of the same categories, Bajanti do worship by actually Pritri, the forefathers, Bhuta, other living beings, Prajay Sadin, controllers of cosmic administration, Shreya, and Aishwarya. Uh, Aishwarya, wealth and power, Praja, progeny, Ipsa, so desiring. Now, these modes of passion, there's three modes of passion. Okay. Um, there's 
goodness, passion, and ignorance. And, and that's the material world. That's the material world. Goodness, passion. And ignorance, right. They're, they're like the material nature and the people in the mode of passion are a little more philosophical. They see everyone as pretty much the same people in the okay. mode of passion there, you know, everybody's controlled by some, one of these modes, you know, either goodness, passion, or ignorance. And you're never really free. Prabhupada used to say, if you yeah. think you're free, you're fool number one, because you're either, you're either controlled by the material energy, the modes of goodness, passion, or ignorance, or you're mo or controlled by, uh, the spiritual end. Okay. And you surrender to Krishna and, and allow yourself to be controlled by the spiritual uh, potency. Is but this ignorance the, that they're talking about? Would that be ignorance kind of like ignorance Maya is, that Krishna? Yeah. Created? Well, you, you know, the predominance of ignorance, then there's symptoms of people in these different modes. The mode okay. of goodness, you're, you're more philosophical, you're, you, you see like equal vision. You don't see any differences in people just because of their bodily okay. uh, identification or whatever. And okay. um, in passion, you're motive, you're like motivated and you, you, you want to like get money and, um, you know, create things and stuff. And the mode okay. of ignorance is, is characterized by madness, illusion and, and sleep. Gotcha. You know, that's okay. the mode of ignorance, you know? Gotcha. But, okay. um, so here we go on translation. Those in sure. the modes of passion, ignorance, worship those in the same category. See, these are these are the symptoms of people that are in different modes of nature. Oh, okay. I see where you're going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, this, I'm is under where, this is where we're at right now. Those okay. in the of passion, ignorance, worship those in the same category, namely the forefathers, other living beings, and the demigods who are in charge of cosmic activities. For they are urged by the desire to materially be materially benefited with women, wealth, power, and progeny. So, like, you know, the 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 demigods are in charge of cosmic activities. Those are like, you know, they have just like any organization has um different administrators. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have the water and you have the light, you know, and all these different facets of universal affairs are controlled by very powerful living entities who are are called demigods and okay people that worship the demigods they worship mm -hmm. they go to the demigods people worship their forefathers they they go to the forefathers and krishna says if you worship me you go to me mm. so it, it just depends on what you do it's all a natural progress process but okay people are, based on their modes uh, the mode that they're in they will be attracted by a certain mode of worship and uh, the people that are like in the mode of passion and ignorance, mm -hmm. they're mainly interested in sense gratification in the form of sex and, and money and power and that kind of thing, you know? Like okay. Percent of everybody in the whole yeah, world. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Especially the politicians. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and read the first paragraph here. Sure. There is no need to worship demigods of whatsoever category if one is serious about going back to Godhead. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly said that those who are mad after material enjoyment approach the different demigods for temporary benefits, which are meant for men with a poor fund of knowledge. We should never desire to increase the depth of material enjoyment. Material enjoyment should be accepted only up to the point of the bare necessities of life and not more or less than that. To accept more material enjoyment means to bind oneself more and more to the Miseries of material existence, more wealth, more women, and false aristocracy are some of the demands of the material, materially dispos disposed man because he has no information of the benefit derived from Vishnu worship. By Vishnu, worship one can derive benefit in, his, in this life as well as in life after death. Forgetting these principles, foolish people who are after more wealth more wives and more children worship various demigods. The aim of life is to end the mi miseries of life and not to increase them. You know, so it's like great demigods like Lord Brahma. He's he's like the engineer of the universe. He's the one that actually uh, on he's the first created being. Like I used to, I told you, I think he's like yeah. He's one hundred and fifty trillion years old right now. Yeah. Yep. I remember you telling me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just only he's having a midlife crisis right now because he he couldn't he saw Krishna and he 
he said, man, I could have been a cowherd boy in Krishna's pastimes. And so he was bumming out, you know. Yeah. So he, he asked uh, Lord Chaitanya to appear in his pastimes, and he actually appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes 500 years ago. Oh, wow. And played the part of a Muslim. He was a Muslim, and he chanted the holy name. He was the Acharya of the holy name. So Lord Chaitanya's oh, movement uh, is very, very open-minded. You can Anybody can, you know, even though there was a strict thing about, you know, like, not associating with the Malachas, the meat eaters, and the Muslims back in the day of uh, 500 years ago in India, like he was considered an outcast, you know, they mm -hmm. didn't accept him as a Brahmin, but Lord Chaitanya accepted him. He, in fact, he elevated him to the, to the, to the preceptor, the, 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 the post of Acharya. Acharya means one who leads by example of the whole. Okay. He was like the epitome of that. And of course he was Lord Brahma himself, you know, but, Okay, that's a whole nother story. But uh, let me just read the this next paragraph. Uh, I have a quick question for you on sure. this paragraph here about about Vishnu. How exactly yeah. does it is Vishnu is one of the the three biggest god uh, the Godhead, right? Yeah, Am Vishnu. I, Vishnu is transcendental. Like there's three main demigods, or no, okay. Vishnu is not a demigod. Vishnu is one hundred percent, one hundred percent God. You know, there's okay. only one God, but um, Vishnu is like a plenary portion of Krishna. Actually, portion Vishnu Krishna. Vishnu is is uh, like a portion of a portion of Krishna. Krishna is the original Godhead. Uh, you asked that question, actually, okay. one of the questions you had. Like, uh, there's a I did, yeah, but I was a little confused about Vishnu's role. Um, yeah, Vishnu that's why is, I bring it up. Uh, see, Vishnu, as far as like the maintenance of this material world, yeah. He's he's in charge of maintenance after it's maintenance. created. Okay. And then Vishnu Brahma's in charge of creating it. And Shiva, Lord Shiva, he's in charge of destroying the whole universe. That's why end. he's called the, the the destroyer then. Okay. Yeah, he 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 beats on his drum and he he does a dance and then the entire cosmic manifestation. Uh so this over. would be uh whenever uh Oppenheimer quoted that I have become the destroyer of wards. He, world he was talking about shiva then well he that was actually a quote from the gita it was actually misquoted because krishna says time i am destroyer of worlds oh but okay. so that was a miss that was that's like a miss a, that's a mis, uh, that misquote. was like a misdefinition but mr okay I mean, you know i mean krishna time is is the killer of everything and mm -hmm. so krishna is time uh, and okay uh, so, but that that actually is a quote from the Gita, but he, he misquoted it. It's misquoted a interpretation of that work. Okay, but, you know, he I'm glad you told me that. Yeah, that, that yeah, that's a very popular movie. I was yeah. kind of interested in seeing it just because of that quote. You know, yeah, I, I didn't see the movie. I, I I was already familiar with Oppenheimer, though. I read a lot about that and von Braun yeah. and all those guys and stuff. So, my um, father actually worked on that those things. Get out, really? Back in the sixties, he. Oh wow! He, you know, he was going to he he was located in New Mexico, and he was working on atomic um, radiation. Um, oh wow! Like the effect of radiation on human beings, and oh, so man. He, he was working on what they call the standard theory, like how much radiation can a can a the standard amount of radiation that a human being can withstand, you know. I got and you. So he was going to name me. He he actually lived in a uh, in a in a small town in New Mexico that where they were doing all this experimentation in yeah early sixties and yeah. uh, <laughs> it's funny because the high school it was a big thing back then you know so they actually built the whole town around this this uh, this uh, kind of thing mm -hmm. and so they they the high school in that town. You know what their their mascot their their uh, logo was? No, what? Mushroom cloud. Get out! Are you <laughs> <laughs> what? The and heck? not only that, my <laughs> father was so into it, he was going to name me Scott Standard Manley. Are you? Kidding? <laughs> yeah, but he never what did. I think it was just a joke. But he he wanted to name me after the research he was doing. You know, <laughs> it's pretty grotesque, but you know, it's wow. Like, the way it is. <laughs> oh my and, you know, like in the 60s he was like involved in all this physics stuff because everybody was like you know the atomic age had begun oh yeah oh yeah right after world <laughs> war ii but then after 
in the 70s then you know, all the hippies started coming around and nobody was interested in physics anymore and so he, he took up astronomy oh okay. he became an astronomer you know wow. he was an associate professor of physics but then uh -huh. Nobody's interested anymore, so he took up astronomy, and so he became a, a, a astronomy professor. Wow! How about that? Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, right. let's. Where? Sure. Where? I'm. A, I'm. A, did you, you? Are you gonna? Which? Where? You read the first paragraph. I'm gonna read the yes. second one. Sure. Material enjoyment. There is no need to approach the demigods. The demigods are but servants of the Lord. As such, they are duty bound to supply necessities of life in the form of water, light, air, etc. One should work hard and worship the Supreme Lord by the fruits of one's hard labor for existence. And that should be the motto of life. Uh, actually, Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita. He said, Yat Kroshi, Yat Dasnasi, Yat Jehosi, Dadas, Yat Yat Tapasya, Sikonte, Yat Kurushva, Madarpanam. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you should perform, should be done as an offering unto me. Okay. That's what by sacrifice. And if you give everything to Krishna, you're no longer working for your own sense gratification. If you're like all these people in the mode of passion that he described, you know, yeah, yeah, eat women and, and, and getting drunk and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You're working for Vishnu, and therefore all of your activities become purified, and then you no longer have any karma after that you actually become free from karma because oh. either it's either good karma or bad karma it's all bad because like if you like say if i did a favor for you yeah um or you did a favor for me either one of us would have to come back in our next life to repay it if we didn't settle the debt in this life you know so oh, even the okay. good karma you have to it, it what goes around comes around so you know you have to like pay up you know Either okay. and you, if it's good karma, then you get good so-called good results. But if it's bad karma, then you have to suffer. You know. Okay. Okay. And so then, but there is a, a if you surrender to Krishna, like if you clap your hands in front of the deities, it says mm -hmm. all the lines in your hand change because your 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 karma goes away. Oh man. Even okay. Good karma or bad karma, it's called a karma. Free so it's possible then during life that you could actually. Um, if, if you, if the way I'm understanding is if you completely live for Krishna and right. offer everything up that you do to Krishna, that is a tangible way to break the karmic cycle then. Exactly. And that's okay. called surrender. That's the bottom that's line. Surrender. Gita, you know, Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Pritchaja, Mame comes her number job. It's actually would be very, um, palatable to atheists because, uh, it, the, the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita is abandon all varieties of religion and just okay. surrender. Okay. I will protect you from all sinful reactions, you know, and all karma. Do not fear. And so okay. when you, when you, it's like, it, it's like when you're um, connected to a current, you know, if you have any mm -hmm. resistance, then it's, there's going to be heat. You know, yes, yes, yes. And, and so the same thing with with Krishna, if you're actually and linked up with him, then there's no reaction to whatever you do. He indemnifies okay. all of your um, your your sinful activities or your good activities. Everything is is completely wiped clean and okay. you're pure as the, the driven snow at that point. You know? Now, if that happens, Scott, and you do live and you end up breaking the karmic cycle when you die, does that also break the chain of reincarnation? No. Well, it, it depends because the only way actually, if you're actually surrendered to Krishna. Yeah. It, it, it's based on if you finish up this, your, your existence in this material world and you completely surrender, you know, you, and you're, you're, uh, you're one hundred percent surrendered to Krishna, and then you think of him at the time of death. So there's a lot of different things that determine where your next birth is going to be. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Let me. Let me. Why am I not? There I am. Hey, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't start the video. But anyway, um, the it, what you do during your whole life is like a training. You know, just uh, you. It's a natural sequence, you know, as as the, you know, whatever your desires are, okay, that kind of 
that kind of like morphs into your being in your next life. Okay. You know? And so you, you work your entire life. And like if, if you like to sleep a lot, maybe you'll yeah. be a in your next life. <laughs> or I got gotcha. you. Okay. If you, if you actually do good deeds and you have good karma, maybe you'll go to a higher planet. Okay. But, uh, you can go up or down. It doesn't matter. You know, it depends on what you do in this life. And then, but it also depends on what your thoughts are at the time of death. Thoughts too. Okay. Says, one who knows my the the my appearance and disappearance uh, will never take birth in this material okay. world. And so, like that is really powerful. If you understand who Krishna is, I mean, not very many people can do that. Everybody's like different people. Krishna says in the Gita that lots of different people are striving for self realization, but hardly one knows who krishna is but if you know that then you you'll actually you're actually liberated from the cycle of birth and death but the thing is a devotee doesn't okay. even if he's liberated from birth and death because he does the same thing whether he's all he wants to do is be around devotees because that's our key that's the 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 our a link to krishna so okay. we just no, we want to be around devotees of God because then then we have a, a pathway, you know. Some, so when you say way, self-realization, then would that be akin to complete surrendering to Krishna and understanding then what yeah. his plan is for you? Yeah, exactly. When self-realization, okay. see the self, it's not like it's not like some artificial knowledge imposed upon by the outside. It's okay. actually inside our heart, and Krishna is the soul of our souls. He's the Paramatma. He's the localized aspect of the Supreme is in our heart. Okay. And so he knows he's he's accompanying us in all our different life bodies, and the individual soul is the Atma, but he's the Paramatma. But he also has his own crib up in the spiritual world, which is really nice. Okay, so your Atma then our bodies are going to decay and fall away, but our Atma remains the same. Our Atma. Yeah, continues. yeah, yeah. It says, it says in the Gita, it says, uh, as, as the embodied soul is a soul passes through this body from boyhood to youth, to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. It, okay. The self-realized soul, in other words, the person that's been, you know, it's, it's become enlightened. He's not bewildered by such a change. Because it's just a natural progression because, okay. you know, you, 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 the, the, these bodies are like, not, we're not the body, we're the soul inside the body. And everybody in the material world, unfortunately, that's one of the major problems with this material world because we have these material bodies. We wanted to enjoy separately from our original source, original personality of Godhead, the, our, our friend, our home in the spiritual world. We're kind of like trying to set up our own crib here, you know, in the material mm -hmm. world to, mm -hmm. enjoy and to, re to, uh, to exploit the resources of material nature for our own aggrandizement. So when we are finished with that nonsense, then we can mm -hmm. actually surrender to Krishna. And uh, he's our real, he's our best friend. He's our lover. He's our, our teacher. He's our guru. He's our boss. You know, he's the, he's everything. And he's the best of anybody any of those like all these th relationships we have you can have with krishna but mm -hmm. his is the perfection of that because he's and he's the soul of our souls and the cause of all causes so when you're enlightened that means you know who you are mm -hmm. automatically and you know who uh you, who everybody else is your relationship to every other living entity krishna says uh, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master inquire from him submissively and render service to him the self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he's seen the truth. And when mm. you thus learn the truth, you will know, Krishna says, that all living beings are but part of me. They're in me and are mine. Wow. So Krishna, okay. Everybody is part and parcel of Krishna. We got 10 minutes left here. No problem, man. Sorry, yeah, that really I, that really cleared you know, up. This is, like, this is a Bhagavad Gita is like Krishna consciousness 101. You know, it really does touch the the basics and so um but you know anywhere you do it, it's like biting into a sweet ball you know we have these these indian sweets are called sweet balls and <laughs> you know 
They're called Simply Wonderfuls. They're made with butter and powdered milk and maybe raisins. And okay. they're just like, they melt in your mouth, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> powdered sugar, powdered sugar. Thanks for that explanation. That really summed up a couple things for me. Yeah. And yeah, I appreciate that. This next sure. paragraph. Uh, yes. Okay. So did I there read this one? Yeah. You, you read the yeah, last Yeah. You read one. the second one. I got to read the last one here. Right. And this, the, that word there is called Vrajadam. Just uh, go ahead. And my, I'm on Lord Krishna, correct? Yeah, okay, yeah. Lord, Krishna. Lord Sri Krishna, when he was personally pr present at, go ahead, Scott, say that one, buddy. Rajadam. Thank you. Stopped the worship of the demigod Indra and advised the residents of Vraja to worship by their business and to have faith in God. Worshiping the multi demigods for material gain is practically a, per a perversity of religion. This sort of religious activity has been condemned in the very beginning of the Bhagavatamam as Kaitava Kaita Dharma. Cheat cheating religion. Kaitava Dharma means cheating religion. Okay. There is only one religion in the world to be followed by one and all, and that is the Bhagavata Dharma, or the religion which teaches one to worship the supreme personality of Godhead and no one else. Right. Which must be uh, Krishna. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's because Krishna is the supreme. He's the original personality of God. And Vishnu is a portion of his portion. And all other demigods are coming from Krishna. And um, so the Vishnu expansions of Krishna are equal to in quality. But Krishna has extra qualities by himself. You know, he's like he plays the flute. He attracts everyone in the universe by his beautiful form. I mean, he has he has like four qualities that even Vishnu doesn't have and Narayan doesn't have. Okay. And uh, Lord Shiva has like up to 78% or like uh, almost, he's like the comparison between milk and yogurt. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then living entities can have like up to 78% of the qualities of God. And then the demigods are higher demigods. They are more powerful. But Bhagavat Dharma, Bhagavat, we actually had the, the, it's really cool because we had the uh, we had what they call a Pandal program in, in New Vrindavan uh, last year. Mm -hmm. and, um, 50 years ago, last year, in 1972, Prabhupada mm -hmm. kind of introduced this Bhagavad Dharma discourses, like a three-day Pandal program. Pandal means like a meeting. So you have these in India oh, all the time. Okay. And mm -hmm. they, they actually... Um, the devotees came from all over the world and into New Vrindavan up on the top of this hill. And mm -hmm. some of the devotees that are still living there, like very advanced devotees, they spoke and gave their realization about that. But that was the Bhagavat Dharma discourse. Bhagavat means Bhagavan is, is uh, the name of God. So the, oh, okay. the Dharma, oh, Dharma means religion. Yeah. And Bhagavat can mean the person Bhagavat or, or Bhagavan. Or mm -hmm. the Bhagavat is like the Bhagavatam or the Bhagavad Gita, which is the scripture. So, okay, but that yeah. is the, you know, so you get the you got the teacher, you got the Bhagavan himself, and you got the scripture that's representing, and that's the triangle of truth. The way you understand truth is you have to check all these three things. You got to check each box. You know. Okay. It's Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Guru means the teacher, the spiritual uh, preceptor. Like everybody should have a guru. Yeah. And then sadhu means like the holy person. And then the holy scripture person. is like, you know, the this, so what we're reading yeah. now. The material. This, this particular book is uh, spoken about Krishna. The Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna. So that's Scott, how does that between. differ from uh, Sanatana Dharma? Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan means eternal. Eternal. Sanatan is a Sanskrit word which means um the eternal religion, like there's no beginning or end to see Sanatan Dharma. Dharma means the nature of something like nature of well, something. the Dharma of water is wet. The Dharma God. of fire is heat and light. So gotcha. what's the Dharma of a human being? What do you think? Uh, the soul. The Dharma, the Dharma of human being is like quality. So the Dharma. Oh, of being, OK. Bob Dylan wrote a song about it. Humility. No service. There service. is no there is no 
uh, exception to the rule of service, everyone's serving somebody. You're serving uh, oh, that's a good you know, point. Brianna and your wife. and That's a great point, uh, yeah. And uh, then, you know, the shopkeeper is serving the customer and the politicians are supposed to be serving the, the people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody's serving somebody. It's like that that song by Bob Dylan he wrote in the 80s. You got to serve somebody. <laughs> yes, indeed, you got to serve somebody. It might be the devil. It might be the Lord. You still got to serve. He, he had like a Christian phase. He met this broad who was like a Christian, and he kind of oh, got okay. for a little while. <laughs> he said, you might like to drink whiskey. You might like milk. You might be rich or poor. You might be blind or lame, living in another country under another name, but you still got to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you got to have to serve <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What a good point. Good point, though. Yeah, but that there, you know, like if if nobody, everybody wants to serve somebody, that's our proclivity as human beings. There's no exception to that rule. If people mm-hmm. don't have anybody to serve, they'll get a dog. <laughs> and nobody's really happy, you know? Yeah, that's true. They, they have to, where can we ha- repose our love and affection and service to where we never, it never ends? And that is a Sanatan Dharma. That's the eternal nature. That okay. is our actual constitutional position as human beings. We're eternal servants of Krishna. And that there's only one God. He's only one without a second. And that's the one, the re, one religion that Srila Prabhupada is talking about there. Gotcha. You know, there's so many different demigods, but, and mm-hmm. people with material desires due to their modes of nature, they're attracted by this kind of like, if you want something, you know, the demigods are very powerful. They can give you whatever you want. If you want to be rich, like, like Lord Shiva's worshipers, they're all rich, but Vishnu, oh, is that right? Vishnu is Vishnu's worshipers. Uh, is there's a whole pastime behind it, but they're most usually pretty poor. <laughs> oh, wow. They, they don't really have any money, you know? Okay. And there's a whole pastime <laughs> behind that, but uh, it's kind of interesting because... Uh, Very you know, much so. But uh, anyway, we got about two minutes left here. We're just sure. going to do this one verse. Do you want to talk about anything like in particular? About your no, whatever you, whatever you think, man. Yeah. Okay. Well... Uh, whatever you would like to do. Yeah, we only got two minutes left here. Yeah, but, not uh, a problem. The, the 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 whole thing is, uh, I think the bottom line is, you have to surrender to a higher authority. I mean, you know, like Prabhupada said, you know, if you if you think you're free, mm-hmm. you're fool number one because everybody's <laughs> controlled, you know, and uh, you know, like. You know, like all these these uh, fake gurus, you know. Yeah. They they think they're the supreme controller, you know, and they, they try to claim to be God, you know. I yeah. am moving the sun. I am moving the moon, and but then they have a toothache and they have to go to the dentist. <laughs> What's really interesting for me is that just as you said, everybody has to serve something. In my book, that's how I start off. Basically, though, in mine, the analogy is that we're all enslaved to something, but the meaning is virtually the same. Yeah. So it's, a, I mean, a lot of really interesting things here that, that are right up my alley. I appreciate this too, Scott. I thought this was going to be like really, really dogmatic. Um, no, but it's it was not very, dogmatic very, at all. It, it, yeah, it, it's it, very easy to follow, very easy to understand, which I appreciate. Yeah. You know, the thing is, you know, like well, a lot of people like my father, for instance, he sure. thought that the religion, all kinds of religions was really dem- dogmatic. It was like, we know the truth and you don't. You know, yeah, and here's yeah, the way yeah. it is, and I'm going to shove it down your throat, right? So, but the thing is, it's not at all like that. It's a dynamic thing, and uh, it's revealed. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, I thank you so much for for attending. You know, we're the two no, guys Scott, in thank the you. Tom class now. I'll be at your next one next week, unless something oh, cool. comes up. Yeah, that'd okay? be great. All right, buddy. Awesome. Thank you very much for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. All right, have a good one. You as well, buddy. See you later. Bye. Bye, bye.